this perhaps is going to be a transitional year for all of God's people in lieu of the international and national issues that face us as a people. 2017 is going to be a year where the church is going to have to live out God's purpose for her. This morning, God has placed on my heart this question, what will you talk about in 2017? What will you be saying in this new year? I'm not worried about what you're going to think. I'm not concerned about how you feel. Not really concerned about what others think about you. But the question for all of us this morning, as we begin this new year that God has allowed us to see, the question for all of us, including me, is what are you going to be talking about in 2017. Now, if we look at this question, Isaiah is clear. But I want you all to put in your mind this statement coming from the book of Romans, where Paul says, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. If people are to develop faith, which is trust in God, belief in God, dependence upon God for survival, how are they going to hear about it if believers don't talk about it? If lives are going to be changed, if homes are going to be transformed, if children are going to develop, if relationships are going to be strengthened, if evil is going to turn to good, if God is going to do anything through us, it's going to be as a result of what we talk about. For faith cometh by hearing, and hearing when those who know God talk about God. What are you going to be talking about in 2017? Doesn't matter where you are, in school, at work in the laundromat, in the supermarket, doesn't matter what you're doing, activities, swimming, golfing, tennis, talking, watching TV, talking about your favorite sports team, whatever you're doing, we've been called to be a witness. God's not going to make some special time for you to be witnessing. His aim is that everywhere you are, you be who you are in order that he can do what he wants to do through you wherever you are. There's no place off limits to believers. So don't get caught up in that guilt trip, folk trying to tell you wh where you ought to be since you are a believer or what you ought to do. No, no. 
the just live by faith. The righteous are led by God's spirit. So we've got to now see that wherever we are, God intends for us to be there. Paul was in prison, but still a witness. Lord have mercy. John was on the Isle of Patmos, but he was still a witness. Abraham was in the era of Chaldees, but he was still a witness. David had found himself one time in a cave, but even there he was called to be a witness. Doesn't matter where you are, doesn't matter where you go, God can use you. In fact, you might be the only light God has where you are. You might be the only preacher, <laughs> pastor, teacher that God has for that environment where you are. So the question now is, what are you going to be talking about? My Lord, you know, we talk about a whole lot of crap. Some of us worried about what's going to happen with the Trumpsters. But time will take care of Trump. <laughs> Folk talking about Russia and Putin and what he's going to do. Last time I heard, the earth is the Lord. And everything in it. Folk worrying about what's going to happen in the Middle East. They're going to continue to fight. God said ever since Ishmael and Isaac, Isaac rather, he said they're going to be at war. No need in us trying to change what God has already said. He said it would be so. So we need to stop tripping as a church and as a people. Stop tripping on what's happening around us and begin to understand God's word. You know, nobody in this life here is going to walk through without some adversity. Nobody's going to get through without being bruised. Nobody's going to go through this thing without some anguish and some frustration. But the question is, how do you go through it? We've got a Savior that told us, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I don't understand why believers trip. If God says he's with you. Lord have mercy. Jesus made it plain that one time when he said, consider the lilies of the field. How beautifully they are adorned. But look at you all this morning and how God has dressed all of you up. And how beautiful and how wonderful you look. Consider the, the sparrow that has no hands to sow. No instruments to plow. No means of digging up. But guess what? Every one of them that falls to the ground, God knows about. Isn't that something? How much more valuable are you than these? We've got to start understanding who we are as believers. We've got to stop being so emotional and so reactionary to everything. And learn how to sit back sometimes and say, come on in, God. I'm not in this by myself, and, and I'm not alone. I know you're with me. Lord, have mercy. Embrace his peace. Peace. Peace is knowing that you're not alone. 
Peace is knowing that God is with you. Peace is knowing that even in the storm, you can sleep because God controls the storm. God is ready for believers to start living like they trust him. God wants us to start living like we realize that he is worthy of our obedience. God wants us to start living so that others will know that you have a relationship with the eternal. What are you going to talk about? There's a whole lot to talk about. With all my social media junkies, what are you going to blow up the sheet? My, my, my. What are you going to share around the world since the internet has brought us to a point of asynchronous communication? Don't trip on that. Asynchronous communication is being able to say something here and it's received around the world at the same time. We now have the ability to communicate around the world. What are you going to be talking about in 2017? The prophet has given us something to talk about. God will give us something to talk about. Oh, glory. If you walk with him, if, you lead, if he leads and guides you, if you open up your mind to understand that wherever you are and whatever you're doing is a part of his plan for you, if, if you can for one minute get away from thinking offensive or defensive about what's going on and ask the question, Lord, what are you doing? If you can just sit on yourself long enough to let your anxieties, your fears, your, your, your abilities, your challenges, allow those things to become second nature. And, and just for one minute say, Lord, I'm here. What would you have me to say? Oh, what a way to look at life. The next time your, your supervisor gets on your nerves, Lord, what would you have me to say? When, 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 when your boo doesn't act the way you think your boo ought to act, and you want to respond in a way that you think is appropriate, maybe you need to ask, Lord, what do you want me to say because your conversation has the power to change their lives if 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 life and death are in the power of the tongue it, it has to be about the content of what comes off the tongue oh somebody let's understand what god is saying i will tell of the lord unfailing love. No matter how you treat me, I can still talk about how good God has been to me. <laughs> I can choose now to get all bent out of shape because I feel as if I have been, what, neglected, uh, taken advantage of, uh, 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 taken for granted. But if I stand back and say, regardless of what you, her, him, them did to me, God is still good to me. I can talk about God's love for me and not your foolishness that you've done. What are you going to talk about? I will praise the Lord for all he's done. I'm going to praise him today. 
because he woke me up this morning. I, I'm going to praise him today because I'm still walking on two feet and I don't need anything to give me assistance to get around. I'm going to praise him because no one stops him from making the air that I breathe. I found something to give God praise. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time complaining and grumbling and griping. Because even in the midst of my misery, God is still keeping me. I'm here. I'm moving by his power. So I've got something to praise him about. And when the walls begin to press in on you as they will, find something to give God praise for. Anybody can complain. Anybody can find fault. Anybody can find something to talk about and, and, and tear somebody down about. But instead of tearing someone down, start praising God instead. God, I praise you that I got here ears to hear this foolishness that they're saying. Oh, Lord, I wish they understood what I know. That in the midst of all they're trying and doing, they can't do nothing unless you say so. I will rejoice in his goodness to all the leaders. Israel is the term, which means the people of God, the citizens of God's kingdom. God is good to us. I'm going to talk about his goodness. No matter what my ups and downs have been, I'm still going to talk about his goodness. I might have gone to jail, but if I'm out of jail, I can say God has been good to me because he got me out of jail. You know, I might have had a nasty attitude and cussed everybody out who I felt like cussing out. But God has cleaned up my tongue. I'm going to praise him for his goodness. What are you going to talk about? If God has done something for you, shouldn't you praise him sometimes? He granted us love. He granted us goodness. He gave us something worthy of praise because of his mercy and his mercy says whatever we received from God we didn't deserve. on that for a minute. I invite you now to go to your home and look at the things that's in your home. God allow you to get each one of them. You didn't deserve it. He was merciful. How many times you have transgressed against what you know to be right? Oh, hello, somebody. All you church folk up in here ain't been good all your life. Forgive my ebonics. And depending on how you brought the new year in, God may have some issues with you even now. But the reality is, you didn't deserve it, but he did it because he loves you. God knows that all of creation was messed up with Adam and Eve. 
But God demonstrated his love for us while we were yet sinners. His son died for us. God loves us, and nobody can do nothing about that. What amazing love God has for each one of us. He said, look what God did. We are his very own. We belong to God. So every now and then you ought to ask the question, do you know who your daddy is? I hear folks start talking all kind of trash. And I, they don't realize whose child I am. <laughs> you say all you want to say, but I know whose child I am. And if I'm a child of God, guess what? You can say whatever you want to, but I dare you to go down on your knees and say, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. And watch your daddy handle your business. <laughs> Surely, they will not betray me. Just a few little trifling words against me. In 2016, how many times did you betray your faith in God? Don't, don't, don't look at nobody. Don't try and point out nobody else's stuff. Just deal with the trunk, the stuff in your trunk. The junk in you. The stuff that's got your pocketbook heavy. The things that got your wallet empty. Again, God says, if he's been good to us, what reason do you have to betray him? If God has been faithful to you, what reason do you have to step out on him? Lord, have mercy. If he has loved you in the midst of your wrongs, lifted you out of your trials and delivered you from your challenges, then why on earth do you want to turn your back on him? But the word says, again, look at the caveat. And he became their savior. God has the power to deliver us from anything that wants to bind our minds up. Or you need to write in the score of your Bible, those of you who are taking notes, you need to look at Philippians chapter 4 again. And you need to make sure that you read that entire chapter. But there is a, there is a verse right in the middle of that thing where after he tells all of you worrying folk to stop worrying, and he tells you that he will keep you in perfect peace, he said, these are the things you ought to think about. Y'all ought to memorize those things. They'll give you something to talk about. Now, I like to quote it, but since we are in church, and as pastor preacher, I was told I'm supposed to be apt to teach. Your homework is to go catch it for yourself. I would suggest that you write it on an index card 
some of you may, may need to put it on your dash because you have a habit of getting into personal road rage while you're driving. Some, some of you need to put it on your desk at your job because every now and then you like to just show your stuff in front of your coworkers. Some of you need to put it in the bathroom when God can get you all by yourself and remind you about who you are and who he is. Think on these things. God will give you something to talk about. Well, this last point, and we're going home. Talk about this this year. In all their suffering, he also suffered. You want to talk about something? When you're going through. You're not by yourself. When you want to talk to folk and they, they start to lift up their laundry basket of mess, let them know that you don't, don't have to carry that mess by yourself. He wants to walk with you through this mess. Talk about that. Tell folk how to find salvation in the midst of their suffering. Tell folk how to see God's hands, even in the best and the worst of situations. Talk about this. He personally rescued Peter. Oh, Lord, I don't care how bad someone is, God still can save them. Sometimes God can't use us as an instrument to tell folk about his goodness because some of us have already passed judgment on folk and we want to let them know what we believe about them and we think they deserve what they have. Because we forget that all have sinned, all have fallen short of his glory. And the truth of the matter, if it wasn't for the grace of God, You ever notice how people can be so specific, so intricate, so detailed, so, so, so knowledgeable about somebody else's mess? We used to have this expression in Brooklyn that says, in order to know something, you got to do something. Because crazy knows something. You got to know something about what you're talking about to be so accurate. You have to have done some of what you're criticizing somebody about to be so specific. You got to have done, you must have done something that they did in order for you to be so clear and so crystal clear about every aspect of it. You've got to be guilty of something that you're holding somebody else guilty of. Look at the pot calling the kettle black. All you sanctified folk up in here, you are always washed. In fact, if you're sanctified, it means that God had to wash something off you because you had some mess he had to get rid of. Oh, stop being phony and be real with one another. He rescued me. He redeemed me. He pardoned me. He did not give me what I deserve. 
but he had mercy on me. And sometimes when we start getting real with ourselves, we can get real with people and we can say, no, no, I don't try and cover that mess up. I know about that mess because guess what? I've been there, brother. I've been there, sister. And if God can fix me up, he's the same God. He can do it for you. No, 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 no. I don't come judging you. No, I don't come criticizing you. No, I come wanting to understand that God might give me a word fit and in season that will reach you where you are. The same Isaiah said, God's word will accomplish what he wills for us, and it will not come back to him void. The question is, what a believer is talking about? What are we saying to folk? He lifts us up. He lifts us up. Dr. Bernard Holmes looked into my face at Columbia Bible College. Rodney Lindsay and I were the only two African Americans in our graduating class. Bernard Holmes was teaching homiletics for preachers. And he made a statement after I had delivered a sermon as we all had to do in class. And he said, my brother, God has chosen a person of African descent to lead us into the new millennium he said because no other people on the face of the earth can identify with the people of Israel and struggle man and oppression like they do he said if you have experienced oppression if you know what it is to be considered less than if you've gone through the experience of your best still not being good enough. He said, and if God blesses you in the midst of that to be successful, he said, no one can talk about how God rescued them like they can. We're living in all kind of houses now. In every kind of neighborhood. Because God lifted us up. We're attending universities all over the world now. Why? Because God lifted us up. We're driving every kind of vehicle on the mark. Why? Because God lifted us up. We came to this country in shackles and chains, but there are no chains holding us down now, but the chains of our minds and our thinking. Why? Because God lifted us up. If anybody got something to talk about, every one of us in this room does. Look at where you came from. Look at what God has done. Think about the things you had to overcome just to get here. Praise God for his goodness. Praise him for his love. He carried us through. He carried us through. I've always been amazed with the bourgeoisie Negro. <laughs> I'm dating myself because bourgeoisie was a term familiar back in the 60s and 70s where as a result of manpower, cheetah, 
as a, as a result of the civil rights movement led by Dr. King and also, uh, I'd say, fueled by uh, Farrakhan. Because the truth of the matter is the two of them were very much fighting for the same thing. Well, anyhow, you, 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 it, it developed a type of Negro who perhaps was just one generation from the farm, who is probably still the product of the ghetto. But they had the opportunity to get educated. And because of their schooling, they began to see themselves above where they came from. And they arrived. They could drive the Cadillac. Every now and then one would have a Mercedes or Lincoln. Th their children didn't have to go to the public schools as they went to because they could choose now to put them in private education, parochial schools or Catholic schools. They were now able They now developed a mindset where they had dinner jackets that they would wear at home. Women would have these long extensions that they would cut their cigarettes with. And they created a mindset that they were above. They had We used to call them bourgeoisie in words because they thought they were better than us. They didn't want to have anything to do with us. But then something happened. They found out that they were just as messed up as we were. Because America has not changed that much. It's still a capitalistic nation. It's still a nation that lives out its manifest destiny. We're still subject to the evil of white supremacy. I don't care how much education you get. When you walk in the right community, folk will remind you of where you came from. Hello, Oprah. You remember when Oprah Winfrey went to England? She had her millions, but England let her know where she came from. If we got anything, it's because God has changed us. If we have become anything, it's because God placed us there. Stop tripping. Give God praise. Acknowledge that you couldn't make it without him. He's been so good to us. You want to talk about something? Go back home. There's a grandma and Uncle Bubba and all of them. Get an old-fashioned dose of where you came from. Revitalize your, your history. Grab a hold of it and take courage and begin to tell folk who begin to complain about everything, about your struggle and how God blessed you. When you come to church, don't be so cute to praise him. When you get together to worship, don't get so, so, so subdued and so sedated 
to the point where you can't lift up your hands and say, I thank you, God, for being so good to me. Our children, young people rather, raised the question with me this week. Let's go in this discussion. Pastor, we invite folk to come. And they'll come for a while. But then they don't desire to come back anymore. We need to do something about that. I want to let you know that it's not about the music. It's not about the preacher. It's not about the altar. It's about every one of us in the pews, in the pulpit. It has to do with our conversation. You can invite folk to come to church, but if there is no evidence through your conversation that you have been in church and transformed by the power of God, then you don't have any staying power to keep folk there. Because you can find religious pretenders everywhere. There's a church on every corner full of folk pretending. The question is, what are they talking about? I heard Jesus say, and I say this to you all with all sincerity. He said, if I be lifted up from the earth. He didn't say my music. He didn't say our activity. He didn't say our programs. He said he would draw all. Oh, the church needs to start talking about Jesus and letting folk know that he makes a difference when you allow him to come into your life. And the church says, 